Hi everybody, I am going to talk about the deaf blindness. Deaf blindness is concomitant hearing and visual impairments, the combination of which creates such severe communication and other developmental and educational needs that they cannot be accommodated in special education programs solely for children with deafness or children with blindness. Deaf blindness does not necessarily refer to a total inability to see or hear. Many individuals who are deaf blind have some usable hearing and or vision. However, the concomitant effect of both vision and hearing loss is significant. It greatly affects the ability to access information. At the end of this talk, you will develop adequate knowledge about the meaning of deaf blindness, understand the causes and associated syndromes of deaf blindness, and learn the role of social worker in helping to manage deaf blindness in individuals. Let me now mention the meaning of deaf blindness. Deaf blindness refers to the auditory and visual impairments of a child, the combination of which causes such severe communication and other developmental and educational problems. Children with visual and multiple impairments or deaf blindness have a combination of disabilities which are expected to continue indefinitely and which impair performance in two or more of the areas such as alternate development, communication, ability to move around, cognition, self-care, social and emotional development. According to the meaning of deaf blindness, a person is deaf blind when he or she has a severe degree of combined visual and auditory impairment. Some people with a deaf blindness are totally deaf and blind while others have residual hearing and vision. Their problem of communication is very severe. The term deaf blind is used to describe a heterogeneous group of people who may suffer from varying degrees of visual and hearing impairment, perhaps combined with learning and physical disabilities, which can cause severe communication, developmental and educational needs. A precise description is difficult because the degree of deafness and blindness possibly combined with the different degrees of other disabilities are not uniform and the educational needs of each person will have to be decided among the individuals who have combined vision and hearing loss or deaf blindness. Thus, the child with deaf blindness is not a deaf child who cannot see or a blind child who cannot hear. The problem is not an additive one of deafness or blindness, nor is it solely one of communication or perception. It encompasses all these things and more. Deaf-blind persons are multi-sensory deprived for they are unable to utilize their distant senses of vision and their hearing to receive non-distorted information. Their problem is complex. Let me outline the characteristics of a child with a deaf blindness. A child who is deaf-blind may lack the ability to communicate with his or her environment in a meaningful way, have a distorted perception of the world, be deprived of the information necessary to anticipate future events or the results of his or her actions, be deprived of many of the most basic extrinsic motivations, have medical problems that lead to serious development lags be mislabeled as developmentally disabled or emotionally disturbed, be forced to develop unique learning styles to compensate for his or her sensory impairment and 
have extreme difficulty in establishing and maintaining interpersonal relationships. Let me discuss about some of the causes of deaf blindness. Deaf blindness may occur because of prenatal problems such as viral infections, prematurity, genetic abnormalities, drug or alcohol use by the mother, other infections or accidents. Postnatal deaf blindness may be the result of meningitis, encephalitis, other childhood diseases or accidents. The number of infant and children with deaf blindness continues to be of concern. Advances in medical science have reduced the infant mortality rate and extended the lives of children born with multiple birth defects. A large number of children now endure an extended lifetime with one or more disabilities. The best known reason for congenital deaf blindness is rubella in most of the developed countries. As far as India is concerned, there is no authentic data available in this regard. But in most of the programs focusing on children with multiple disabilities and deaf blindness in India, children with rubella are seen. There are many other congenital conditions or syndromes which result in deaf blindness and multiple disabilities. There are over 70 known causes of deaf blindness. There are some syndromes that cause deaf blindness. Syndromes are groups of signs and symptoms that occur together and characterize particular abnormality. Let me describe some of these symptoms which cause multiple disabilities or deaf blindness. Charge syndrome is a collection of six multi-system congenital anomalies. They are coloboma of iris and or retina, heart defect, chonal atresia, growth retardation, genitalia anomalies and ear anomalies. Coloboma of iris and or retina is an eye deformity involving absence of part of the eye. Coloboma of the iris that is at the front of the eye may limit the person's ability to adjust to bright light and the coloboma of the retina that is at the back of the eye will create a blank area in the person's visual field. Heart defect may be of various kinds. Sometimes these problems can resolve themselves over time, but often emergency surgery is needed soon after birth. Tonal atresia is a blockage of the passages at the back of the nose and is one of the major criteria for the diagnosis of charge association. The blockage may be on one side or both sides and it may be formed of a membrane of skin or of bone. Emergency surgery is often necessary immediately after birth to open these passages. Growth retardation may become evident as a child matures. Most of the people identified as having charge association or below the third percentile of physical growth norms. There are multiple factors leading to retarded growth including severe feeding difficulties, reflux, breathing problems, chest infections and hospitalization. Genitalia anomalies is specifically the incomplete development or underdevelopment of external genitals which is very common in males. Both men and women with the charge association often experience hormonal problems. Ear anomalies can affect the external ear which may be unusually large or small or of an unusual shape, the middle ear which indicates bone malformations or chronic middle ear infections 
and or the internal ear which indicates especially high frequency hearing loss. The most common form of hearing loss found in people with a charge association is mixed, namely conductive loss because of middle ear problems combined with a sensory neural loss because of problems with the cochila. It seems likely that at least some people with a charge association may have central auditory processing problems that are very difficult to detect and can be superimposed over the other hearing problems. Apart from these critical features of the condition, there are other anomalies which are often found in people with a charge association such as cleft lip and palate facial palsy, kidney abnormalities, malformations of the larynx, esophagus and trachea, abnormal tongue size, delayed and abnormal dental development, malformed or absent semicircular canals in the ear which means that the balanced sense will be affected or absent, persistent sleep disorder and hypoglycemia. Although some cases appear to be influenced by heredity, environmental factors have not been ruled out. Infants typically are medically fragile and often require repeated surgery to repair cleft palate, esophageal and gastric complications. Rubella is one of the mildest illnesses caused by a virus and is one of the few which regularly causes birth defects when contracted by the pregnant women. When a woman develops rubella during pregnancy, the fetus remains infected throughout the pregnancy and often for an extended period after birth. If the infection occurs during the first trimester of pregnancy, the risk of rubella associated defects is greatly increased. The eyes, ears, heart, central nervous system and brain appear to be especially susceptible to rubella associated damage. The rubella baby may have low birth weight, cataracts, glaucoma, heart defects, hearing defect, brain damage or any combination of these problems. He or she continues to grow more slowly than his or her sibling. Children with rubella are often mislabeled as profoundly retarded. They may show unusual patterns, feeding difficulties and problem in chewing and swallowing foods. Some children show reaction to clothing because sensory damage might have caused a very low threshold of tolerance to tactile sensation. Irregularities of biological functioning often create difficulty delay in toilet habits. Inability to communicate can lead to frustration as well as lacks in social, emotional and cognitive development. Usher syndrome is an inherited condition which results in hearing loss and a progressive loss of vision from retinitis pigmentosa. The hearing loss is thought to be congenital and ranges from moderate to profound. Retinitis pigmentosa can occur without hearing loss also. Usher syndrome causes congenital sensoneural hearing loss and retinitis pigmentosa. Retinitis pigmentosa describes not one disease but a group of hereditary diseases of the retina. Some of the symptoms of retinitis pigmentosa includes night blindness and narrowing of field vision. There are mainly three types of usher. Let me mention about the different types of usher. Usher type 1. Children who are born deaf cannot hear. These deaf children have poor balance and may be late in sitting up and walking. Retinitis pigmentosa seems to occur between 
8 to 12 years. Assessment of the disorder usually includes the evaluation of hearing, balance and vision because Usher syndrome affects all these three senses. Usher type 2 is characterized by moderate to severe loss of hearing from birth. Hearing loss is partial and so the loss is often not recognized until the child is 4 or 5 years of age or older. These children have normal balance. They usually attend classes for partially hearing children or mainstream classes and depend heavily on hearing aids to learn speech. Their retinitis pigmentosa seems to occur in adolescence. Usher type 3 is a very rare form and it causes retinitis pigmentosa and progressive loss in young adulthood. Hearing and sight seem normal. Retinitis pigmentosa diagnosed usually in the 20s of the person. Mild hearing loss may occur at the same age. Throughout adulthood, they become progressively impaired in hearing and sight. Next, Rett syndrome, which is a complex symptom observed only in girls. The girl child develops normally for 6 to 12 months and then the disease manifests during the age of 6 months to 4 years. It is a progressive neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by acquired microcephaly, severe dementia, autism, purposeless hand movements, characteristic hand wringing stereotype, and jerky ataxia of the trunk. Cytomegalovirus is mainly a problem for certain high risk group which include unborn babies whose mothers become infected with the cytomegalovirus during the pregnancy. Children or adults whose immune systems have been weakened by disease or drug treatment such as organ transplant recipients or people infected with HIV. Infants who are infected before birth usually show no symptoms of a cytomegalovirus infection after they are born, although some of these infants can develop hearing, vision, neurologic and developmental problems over time. In a few cases, there are symptoms at birth which can include premature delivery being small for gestational age, jaundice, enlarged liver and spleen, microcephaly, seizures, rash and feeding difficulties. These infants are also at high risk for developing hearing, vision, neurological and developmental problems. Premature infants as a group who are at risk for a broad spectrum of complications during the neonatal period and constitute the largest group of infants facing disability or death. Advances in medical technology have significantly improved the longevity of preterm child. As a result, a great number of premature infants and young children are surviving with multiple congenital anomalies and infectious agents invading the brain or spinal cord can cause widespread damage in a newborn or infant whose immunological system is unable to defend against such an infection. Either the infection itself or inflammation caused by the infection can cause mental retardation, visual impairment, hearing impairment, neuromotor problems or any combination of these. A few examples are meningitis and encephalitis. Let me outline the components of a responsive environment for children with deaf blindness. The environment is not directive or passive but responsive. 
there is someone to respond to any form of communication the child attempts. There are opportunities for the child to interact and form relationships with others. There are sufficient opportunities for the child to initiate events or activities. The child is given opportunities to make choices and solve problems. The child is constantly motivated to reach out and explore. Continuing stimulation of any residual vision and hearing must be provided as well as training to integrate information from other sensory input channels. There are opportunities for hands-on learning and activities that are fun and meaningful. Simple activities are structured in such a way that the child can feel confident and emerge successful in a reasonable length of time. The child is given sufficient time and information so that he or she will be able to anticipate what is going to happen. Let me now tell you about the role of social workers. Social workers should have relevant knowledge and skills related to the interventions for the persons with deaf blindness in a wide range of situations. The main role of social workers is that of care manager in a multidisciplinary team for people with deaf blindness. This role involves assessment of need for community support services and commissioning services according to the criteria of eligibility, availability and cost together with more direct support and counseling individual clients and their families. Social workers initiate a process that creates access to visual and auditory information and enables a child to get connected with the world. They can be an intervener and work consistently one-to-one -one with an individual with a deaf blindness. Their intervention is to be focused on three primary areas of need. They should first provide proper access to environmental information that is normally obtained through vision and hearing. Then they need to facilitate the development and use of receptive and expressive communication skills. Lastly, they should promote the social and emotional well-being of the children with deaf blindness through establishing trusting and interactive relationships. In short, social workers can offer services to persons with deaf blindness such as counseling the persons and their parents, assessment of their needs, referral for psychotherapy, taking up advocacy programs, training the staff working along with the deaf blindness, community inclusion, creating trusting interactive relationships and providing vocational guidance. Let me sum up. Deaf blindness is concomitant hearing and visual impairments, the combination of which creates such a severe communication and other developmental and educational needs that they cannot be accommodated in special education programs solely for children with deafness or children with blindness. Deaf blindness does not necessarily refer to a total inability to see or hear. Many individuals who are deaf blind have some usable hearing and or vision. However, the concomitant effect of both vision and hearing loss is significant. It greatly affects the ability to access information. People with visual and multiple impairments or deaf blindness have a combination of disabilities which are expected to continue indefinitely. A person who is deaf blind when he or she has a severe degree of combined visual and auditory impairment. A child who is deaf blind may lack the ability to communicate with his or her environment in a meaningful way, have a distorted perception of the world, be deprived of the information necessary to anticipate future events or the results of his or her actions, 
be deprived of many of the most basic extrinsic motivations, have medical problems that lead to serious development lags, be mislabeled as developmentally disabled or emotionally disturbed, be forced to develop unique learning styles to compensate for his or her sensory impairment, and have extreme difficulty in establishing and maintaining interpersonal relationships. Deaf blindness may occur because of prenatal problems such as viral infections, prematurity, genetic abnormalities, drug or alcohol use by the mother, other infections or accidents. Postnatal deaf blindness may be the result of meningitis, encephalitis, other childhood diseases or accidents. The best known reason for congenital deaf blindness is rubella in most of the developed countries. As far as India is concerned, there is no authentic data available in this regard. There are over 70 known causes of deaf blindness. There are some syndromes that cause deaf blindness. Syndromes are a group of signs and symptoms that occur together and characterize a particular abnormality. Charge syndrome is a collection of six multi-system congenital anomalies. Rett's syndrome is a complex symptom observed only in girls. A girl child develops normally for 6 to 12 months and then the disease manifests during the age of 6 months to 4 years. It is a progressive neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by acquired microcephaly, severe dementia, autism, purposeless hand movements, characteristic hand wringing and jerky ataxia of the trunk. Social workers can offer services such as counseling to the persons with deaf blindness and their parents, assessment of their needs, referring the persons for psychotherapy, taking up advocacy program, training the staff working along with the deaf blindness, community inclusion of the deaf blind and providing vocational guidance. Let me sign off now and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.